Wow, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, so today is Graduate Sunday, and it's also the second Sunday after Pentecost. We have lots of wonderful participation from some of our graduates from First English, people associated with us. So I want to say from the beginning, thank you to Thomas Olmsted, Sarah Prem, Sonia Stahl, Matthew Olmsted, and Emma Stenowin. You're going to hear from the rest of them later. Um, our lessons for today are from Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and chapter 3, Assorted Verses, and we are going to use Psalm 100, verses 1 through 5. Your part is verses 3 and 5. And our song is, O Christ the Same, verses 1 through 2 for the gathering, and verse 3 for the end. O Christ the Same is to the same tune as Danny Boy, so it should sound familiar to you. I am Pastor Sandra Carlson Alexis from First English Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We're going to begin with our confession and assurance. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you, you may share that greeting with other people. And now we're going to sing verses 1 and 2 of O Christ the Same. Again, this is to the tune of Danny Boy, so it should be very, very, very familiar to you. O Christ the Same also with you. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ have mercy. 
Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, your only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And before our prayer of the day, we are going to have a song from Emma Stenwin, uh, something she's playing on the flute. this together. Loving Lord, you are always there through all times and seasons of our lives. Wrap us in your arms as we weep and laugh, mourn and dance. Amen. And now we're going to read Psalm 100 responsibly. You're going to be reading verses 3 and 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, our maker to whom we belong. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's holy name. Good indeed is the Lord whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from age to age. And now Thomas will be reading our lesson for the day. This lesson is from Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4 through 11, and chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. The teacher of wisdom who wrote Ecclesiastes sees a pattern of generations and time coming and going. While it can seem futile, it can also be hopeful that God renews our life seasons. A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes round to the north. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, they continue to flow. All things are wearisome, more than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see this is new? It has already been in the ages before us. The people of long ago are not remembered, nor will there be any remembrance of people yet to come by those who come after them. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pick up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. 
a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sew, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. The Word of the Lord. There's just a lot going on in the world right now. So if you thought you would hear some inspiring words from Scripture to encourage you, you're going to have to work for it. In today's reading from Ecclesiastes, we heard, There's nothing new under the sun. A generation comes and a generation goes. All is fleeting like vapor. What gain have the workers from their toil? So these are clearly the words of the Eeyore of the Winnie the Pooh gang. All he saw was the negative side of life, right? But maybe there is some comfort in the routine described in Ecclesiastes. I mean, maybe it's good to know that we don't have to be chasing the latest, newest thing. And maybe knowing that it's not all about gaining and achieving, maybe that gives us some relief. And maybe understanding that time is fleeting and generations come and go, maybe that helps us appreciate now and who's with us right now. We can embrace the time we are in. Now, as routine as Ecclesiastes can sound, it also reminds us of the power of routines. Our old routines screeched to a halt due to the coronavirus. Remember way back in late February, early March, when the word coronavirus was only heard in relation to over there in China or over there in Italy. We were quite content to live our lives and our routines of work and play. But then, like a whirlwind, the virus struck here in the United States, and we were told to change. We had to wash our hands better, and we had to distance ourselves from others. And then we were told to stay home, and eventually the call was to wear masks. When you're facing a whole lot of new stuff, all of a sudden, routine? Man, that sounds pretty good. When the writer says the sun rises and goes down, hey, that's a day. Sounds pretty hopeful to me. When I hear about the wind blowing south and then north and round and round, I think, well, it's nice to know that the wind at least is constant, even if so many parts of our lives have altered. The writer of Ecclesiastes was looking for meaning in life. Perhaps a few months of lockdown have helped us to ponder that as well. But it really, it's so hard to think about anything when you're six feet away or when we see a nation struggling to use their right to vote in some of our states or when there's so much unemployment or when people have to protest that life matters for people who are black and brown. Surely life should have as much meaning for people of color as it does for those of us with lighter skin. Maybe we just didn't see as clearly as we can now because now with the lockdown, we have time to listen and watch and reflect. Finding meaning for my life should not diminish you, and your finding meaning for your life should not diminish mine. We are all creatures of God trying to make sense of a difficult world where life can be snuffed out in minutes, where we need to respond to a virus we can't see, and where the depths of racism are only now coming into focus for some. Where is the meaning of life when you've lost a job or when someone you know is sick or you've lost half a semester of classes or a wandering adventure has been cut short or maybe for you it's the pride of graduation has not happened for you. Even in these difficult times, we are finding meaning and sometimes making difficult times meaningful. 
the vice president of our Delaware, Maryland Senate, John Auger said, we can't waste a good pandemic. In other words, when you're facing a tough time, figure out where you can learn for it, from it and how you can grow from it. Just see how these words from the third chapter of Ecclesiastes can challenge us to embrace the season we're in. I mean, in these months, we have seen so much of them. We have seen death in hospitals and we've seen births continue. We have wept, but we've also laughed. Ecclesiastes refers to times of healing and sowing. And during this time, we have seen the healing of some relationships and definitely the sewing of masks. We have seen some realize that this is their time to keep silence and let others have a time to speak. There are calls for breaking down old systems of prejudice with the anticipation of building up something better. These transitions, these what seem like opposites, these changes and seasons are all around us. The coming, the going, the ebbs and flows. This is life. And like the weather in Florida, if you don't like it, just wait a minute. I think another important thing to remember is that these seasons and times are shared. When we're mourning or fighting or losing or tearing, we have a community of people to help us. Even if you're six feet apart, you know you have a community with you and they'll help you through those difficult times and they'll help you with coping skills. So I hope that these words from Ecclesiastes can bring some clarity to all of us, but especially to those who have graduated in our first English family. We want you to know that we are so proud of you and we just, our hearts are breaking that we don't get the opportunity to give you a big hug or embarrass you at church. You have already experienced so much. You become experts in understanding that some seasons of your lives will be highs and some seasons of your lives will be low. As much as we wish that we're not so much the low, especially during a special time, we still find hope because we know that Thomas Olmsted and Sarah Prem, Sonia Stahl and Matthew Olmsted and Emma Stenowin have what it takes to ride the waves of life. Everything has a season, everything has a time, and every season has meaning and we can grow through every time. May God bless all of the days of your life. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. Um, actually, we have a few questions if you'd like to look at those. Those are, um, one is thinking about today, which times do you think we are going through right now when you're looking at Ecclesiastes 3? Um, the second question is, when have you heard Ecclesiastes 3 read, maybe in a worship service, and why was it appropriate in that context? So those are just things to think about. And now we're going to go on with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Praying silently in our homes and together in the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all who are in need, responding to each petition with the words, hear our prayer. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith following the examples of Basil the Great, Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory of Nerianzus, and the teacher Macrina, whom we commemorate today. Bless the graduates of our church family, including Sarah Prem, Sonia Stahl, Thomas Olmsted, Matthew Olmsted, and Emma Stenowin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict throughout our nation, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation as we strive for equality and respect. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for the disenfranchised and all essential workers in our hospitals, stores, utility workers, and other first responders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick and suffering, especially from our members. Jack, Alice, Frankie, Judy, Maria, Andy, Catherine, Dolores, David, Christine, Carol, Richard, and John. And among our friends, Keith, Susan, William, Rochelle, Helen, Ron, Mary, Penny, Bradley, Charles, Chantal, Kiever, Norma, Marcia, Marcia, Bill, Frank, T. Feed all who hunger, empower all whose voices go unheard, and help us to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the city of Baltimore and our online mission field, for our leaders, Donald, Larry, and Jack, and our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, for those who seek healing through the 12-step programs usually offered in our coffee house, for our prayer partner, First Lutheran Church in Ewan, Michigan, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Today, we remember those who were killed in Baltimore last month, including Jared Hill, Tyrone Henderson, Stephen Pendergast, Alajanye Davis, Demetrius Davis, Aaron Sutton, Oz Tatum, Rico Graham, Donald Foster, Detante Emmons, Tyrone McRae Bay Jr., Kyle Williams, Stephen Clark Sr., Randolph Watson, Devin King, Ronald Lewis, Derek Davis, James Labar, Rudolph Lomax, Brandon Brown, Justin Snipe, Troy Shelton, Shawana Spann, Jalen Kuspert, Brianna Mayers, Benjamin Barlow, Preston Rich Jr., Calvin Frost, David Spankler, Tajia Westbrook, Marquise Wilson, John Thomas III, Lamar Judd, and all of those whose names are yet um, to be released. In our grief, bear us up to join the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We've come to the point in our service where we give our offerings, and we thank you that the Stahl family is giving their offerings of their talents. We encourage you to give your offerings as well. You can make a donation to First English Lutheran Church by mailing something, by giving by text, or by going to our website and giving under the giving uh, link. And now we have our special music by the Stahls.
And now our offering prayer. Let us pray. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. And the thanksgiving for the word, let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for all who are in need with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we're going to sing, O Christ the Same, verse 3. O oh Christ the same, secure within whose keeping our lives and loves, our days and years remain. Our work and rest, our waking and our sleeping, our calm and storm, our pleasure and our pain. O oh Lord of love, which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And now a postlude by Sarah Prem, and after that is a very special extra, so you might want to hold on. Bye. Blessings to you. <laughs> 